TJ Jefferson, you have been doing this for a few days now. The top player in the history of every franchise yes. in the National Football League. I know our friends at, uh, pardon my take, have, have fun this time of year, but they call it uh, uh, Mount Rushmore Mount time Rushmore, of year yeah, because sports Rushmore talk shows time. run out of things to talk about. Yep. And they come up with the Mount Rushmore of a sport or a team. You you just said, we're taking three of those faces out. Just throwing them out, man. We're just going to one. There's no easy way out. One player. One. That's it. And so um, we can take. yesterday you did the NFC South, and you named Sam Mills as the Carolina Panther of choice, not Steve Smith, not even Luke Keekley or Cam Newton. They were all mentioned. You went Sam Mills, and Brockman had a problem with not only that, and also naming Deion Sanders as the number one Falcon and not Matt Ryan. That's okay. He's not a fan of either of those teams. So, so this is all right. Right. which yeah. which division do you have today? Well, today, because we really had no direction when we started this, so today we're going to go with the AFC South. Okay. The yeah. NFL Films music is now playing, thanks to Jay Felly. Yeah. That means the floor is yours. Well, as you know, in the AFC South, we have four teams, and they are the Houston Texans. Yes. The Indianapolis Colts. Yes. Which I still can't figure out how they got there. Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Tennessee Titans. So... Right off the bat, we're going to kick this off. Indianapolis Colts, lots of great players. We'll talk about them later, but we're just going to give you the name. It's Peyton Manning, okay? He's he's my guy for the Colts. As for the Houston Texans, J.J. Watt. For the Jacksonville Jaguars, Fred Taylor. I heard you guys kind of discussing that this morning. Tennessee was tough, but I'm going to go with the MVP. I'm going to go with Aaron McNair. I'm going to go with Steve McNair as the number one player in the Tennessee Titans. Peyton Manning and Steve McNair were the co-MVPs of the NFL the first year we were on the air on NFL Network 2003 uh, when we were in Houston, interestingly enough, for our first Super Bowl that we covered. Correct. Brady's second Super Bowl win, beating Jake DeLome and the aforementioned Sam Mills, Carolina Panthers, (laughs) uh, in uh, in that city of Houston. Um, you know, it was Peyton Manning and Steve McNair who showed up as the co-MVPs yeah. on NFL Total Access. We were jacked to have them both at the same time on live TV. You went J.J. Watt over Andre Johnson. That was a tough you? one. You know, uh, Andre Johnson, great receiver uh, in my fantasy football league. He's held in very high regards. Everybody in my league knows that. But, uh, you know, J.J., three-time defensive player of the year, kind of yeah. just gave him the nod over people like Andre Johnson. Arian Foster, another great Texan uh, DeAndre Hopkins, Dwayne Brown, many years on the offensive line. But I, I think that J.J. Watt was the right call for the greatest player in Texans. Did you think at any point in time that the Colts organization also still has the records of the Baltimore Colts? Yes. Within, in, their, within in, their world as in, well. That had John Unitas. He was right there. You know, There's a few others. There's a few others. A lot. You know, um, but many more. Another great Colt. But, I, I mean, Peyton Manning is no, uh, no, growing up. That was... That's it. To us, until Tom Brady went on this Super Bowl run for years, it was Peyton Manning's the best quarterback in the NFL. And, you know, I, I have no problem with Fred Taylor, sir. As you know, that was the name that I mentioned before the did. show. Did you have another name and then heard me and then you were influenced by no, my No, I had Taylor, but Tony Baselli was up there. Unfortunately, you know, his career was only six seasons. Fred Taylor, you know, 11 years, um, 7,000 yard seasons, 11,000 yards yep. right. rushing for that Great team and a very demanding position so that gave fred taylor the edge in my eyes over uh tony baselli also jimmy smith jimmy smith was uh, really good was really good Ma- maurice jones drew our friend mark brunel keenan mccardell they they've had some great players but i, think yeah, I remember taylor... we used to do uh, uh highlights back in the day on, on uh the uh the, the night highlight show on sunday night with me dion and, and mooch jimmy smith i used to make some uh some NYPD blue cracks, you know, for Jimmy Smith. <laughs> Jimmy Smith was really good, but Fred Taylor, oh, I think, yeah, is yeah, yeah, right. is the winner and champion right there. And again, with all due respect to Johnny Unitas, who I'm sure a lot of people will think, you know, I just gave gave the sheriff a little bit of a nod there over Johnny U. I think it's a great list. Uh, I feel like I came a little too hard at you yesterday, so I don't want to come that hard today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, would you, uh, what, what would you come hard at? I, I think about? the only one, I think, for, for the... For the Titans slash Oilers. Eddie George. Well, well oh, let me stop you real quick. Okay. Oh, so Earl Campbell is what you'd say? I would have went Bruce Matthews. Well, it's funny you said that because. You think we need one more? All right, we'll get one more. Oh, wow. Because of the long history of the Houston Oilers. You can't. Even, I decided that I was also going to recognize them. Oh. oh. And, you know, it was a very tough one. There was Warren Moon. There was yeah. Earl Campbell. 
Ray Childress, Mike Munchak, but, but I did Bruce go Matthews? with Bruce Matthews because, you know, back when I was in high school, guys, I wrote a story for my school paper about our offensive line, right? And the editor couldn't understand why I was writing about offensive linemen. And I'm like, they're the big uglies, nothing moves without them. They deserve their respect. And I ended up winning the first place award in the, for the Pennsylvania School Press Association. So I've got a little, you know... <laughs> Got a little soft spot for the big uglies, and that's why I want to recognize Bruce Matthews in his 19 seasons playing for the Texans slash Titans. So seven All Pros, 14 Pro Bowls. You could have do one more with the the Colts too. We could have. I mean, you could have done that. But, but they're still the Colts. They're still the Colts. 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 Right. I guess they were the Tennessee Oilers for a year. They or two. were. Yeah. Don't look, you remember? I think they were the Memphis Oilers look, could, one year, look, too, right? Look, I could go right? back into the, their name the Pittsburgh times? Eagles, but, you know, I want to confuse people. You know what's amazing so. about Bruce, Bruce Matthews real quick? <laughs> Played he every made, position? He made three straight All-Pros at age 37, 38, 39. Also was All-Pro at right guard, center, and left guard. Yeah, he played every position on the line. Maybe the greatest lineman of all time. Yeah, I know. Definitely the most versatile. And the, the lineage of the league as well. I mean, yeah. you, so, okay, so just because they... Change the the name and the and the, the well, like logo. I, that's well, why like you're said, gonna go. DJ one does more. a lot of weird things with lists. He's a big on ties. Like top five, he'll have okay. seven. I know. Yeah. I, know. I like to but do it's all good. Things my own way. I would have had him over Steve McNair, but who? Things. Bruce Matthews yeah, over Steve McNair. I think so. As a Titan. Well, the history of the Titans slash Oilers. Okay. History of the Colts slash Colts. You know, I mean. Yeah. There's a lot of old school folks out there. Say, so remember Johnny Unitas and. And we do remember. And so, it, it, so, so you're going Bruce Matthews as the Oiler. Isn't that a snub to Dan Pastorini? <laughs> uh, no, more a snub to Earl Campbell and Warren Moon. It was oh, okay. the three of them, and it was just the longevity. I just wanted to say the name. I'm just, I, Dan I just wanted to say the name of Dan yeah. Pastorini. Yeah, I understand. But I, you know, I also want to give a shout out to Earl Campbell because for five yeah. seasons nobody did yeah, it better he's, he's doing shout than outs. that guy. You just say four names and have to. Say I can't. I can't just say four. Let names. us say some more. You know names. Well, I haven't said anything in like two hours, so I figured I'd get it all in right now. You know. <laughs> <laughs> What's so I was greatest, intentionally quiet what's all the show. the greatest event of the history of the Astrodome? <laughs> oh, let them play. For real or fake? Both. Fake is, you know, uh, thank you, Bears, thank you, Toros, let, and then let them play. Let them play. You know, as Enos Cabell and Bob Watson came out and helped chant in their breakout uniforms, while Bill Devane, who took over for <laughs> Buttermaker, um, was chanting, let them play in his sort of Gene Cousinow jacket. <laughs> Yeah, that's called Bad News Bears breaking training, folks. I mean, that's if you want to talk. But if you're talking about actual games in the Astrodome, choose anything from the 1986 NLCS, brother. And I'm sure no doubt had you on the edge of your seat wherever you were. I believe that that was the best moment in the I mean, that Astrodome was in that that series was insane. Game seven, 86. Let's go. Just uh, just don't ask Mike Scott for the baseball. You know that, right? A lot of scuffing. A lot of scuffing going on.